Hey, this is Cheryl back with you from Farmhouse Frugally. Today I have a dump haul and six trash to treasures. If you're new to my channel, you'll find crafts, furniture flips, great dump hauls, and trash to treasures. Today's dump haul was small. I found this beautiful robin's egg blue colored large teacup. This little bunny that I am going to make over. This lovely half table that is very dirty and um, not real wood, I don't think. I'm not certain. So we shall see a little when I, when I get a little closer to it. Um, a red vase. I've been collecting colored vases because I give them away very often with flowers from my gardens. This beautiful planter. And some wooden cutouts, a little bunny, some kittens, and some other things. And so today, I am going to make a number of those over for you. And the first one is going to be the little bunny. I started by pulling off the bow that was around its neck and used my heat gun to remove the glue. And then I just took some paint that I already had made up which was kind of an off-white color and I mixed it with some baking soda about 50-50 until I got a really nice thick textured uh, paint and then I'm just kind of quickly stippling pouncing and brushing uh, to cover this is kind of a slick uh, surface so the first coat I'm doing is really just to kind of cover over the flowers and um and just kind of get that slick surface covered. And then once that is fully dry, then I take the brush and I go over it again. Um, mostly pouncing because I really just want that stone look. I'm not going to wax this particular piece, although you can. And if you do, I recommend you spray it with a clear coat or something first so that you can keep the bulk of the paint and the texture on it and then you can take a wax brush and some wax lightly wax it and then wipe it back i have done that before um, but this time i wanted it to just look like a off-white kind of creamy colored um, stone and so here I am just putting that second coat that I missed underneath his chin. <laughs> so he is actually quite adorable. I like his ears. I like the position, uh, you know, that he's in. But I, I really just didn't like the, the painted flowers and the, you know, the bow that was around his neck. So I thought really this would be really quite cute once I got it, just that stone look. And um, I just wanted to keep it very basic and very simple and uh, just leave it just like it is but a little bit of dark antiquing wax would be cute as well once that was done i just put him on a little table next to a few things in my living room and that's really all there was to it it probably took maybe a half an hour for each coat I might have waited a little longer before I put the second coat on just because I wanted um, to make sure that I wasn't going to lift any of the first coat off. Now you can spray, if it's slick, you can spray it. You can use a slick stick or you can spray it with something, uh, maybe a matte finish spray first before you paint it. I didn't bother with that. It was a little chilly today, um, but you could. And here it is. I think he came out adorable. Really, I just love the way his little ears are and his little face. He's just so cute. Looks like he's eating that plant. <laughs> it was not intentional, but actually, it's kind of cute. So that takes me on to item number two. Now, this teacup was really quite lovely. I just cleaned it really good. Came from the dump. And so I stuffed, I glued some um, foam. And I went through my stash and I took out some 
different kinds of greens. Um, when I do a floral arrangement, I like to start with some green around the outside edge, and then I want to use the filler. So I like to work in threes and fives when I can. I think that that really makes a really lovely, especially if you're doing a, a, a circular, a somewhat uh, symmetrical arrangement. So I started with three roses, and then I took five of the dark lavender picks that come from uh, the dollar store. Some of these I've had for years and years, so I'm not sure where all of them come from. Uh, but these lavender-like picks, each the pale purple and the deep purple, as well as they have white over at the dollar store. I like those. Um, so I just clipped them all off down to the size that I wanted uh, so it would be easier to work with. And sorry, I'm getting out of frame here, but I did um, just kind of evenly disperse those throughout and then using the pink I had three pink colors I wanted to just fill those in where those were needed and then I had these little tiny almost daisy like whites um, so I thought that that would kind of fill in some of the extra areas since I was a little short on green and then I decided I did want a deeper pink these are beautiful and lovely and very pale pastel but sometimes it kind of gets a little washed out so i thought just adding this pop of uh, almost a fuchsia colored rose um, would be just the thing um, i'm actually making this for a birthday gift for someone and um, i just really like the way that it came out and then i took the green moss from the dollar store and I just shoved it in everywhere that uh, I needed it around the outside edge so you couldn't see any of that foam. And then here and there in the plant, although it's pretty well stuffed, um, there really wasn't a lot showing. I just wanted to make sure that if you turn it this way or that, you won't be able to see. And I think that it came out really lovely. And so if you have any florals hanging around, um, it's easy to pick up just a, a dollar teacup at a yard sale or at a thrift store or something. I'm glad that I was able to pick this up on the good table at the dump and I think that it'll make that person happy uh, when they give it to them tomorrow for their birthday. So that takes me on to item number three. This planter, now actually this planter was the perfect color for my home. I put it in the sink and I cleaned it up and I put it in my garden. It matches my bird bath and I love it. So as soon as I get a plant for it, I am going to fill it and that is all I'm going to do with that one. Number four, you'll remember the other day I made this cute little bird feeder and I had one little piece of wood left over, barn board. So I took one of those little thumbtack um, clips from the dollar store, from my stash, and put that in to the top of it. I just wanted to use that little piece of wood up, and I took a piece of drop cloth. I cut it to size, frayed the edges, because I had this little be left over from an IOD transfer and I hadn't uh, used that in any of the other uh, crafts that I had done recently so I decided that I would use it today just to use up this little piece of wood. I like making some small shelf sitters and uh, small items occasionally instead of doing large items. I do have a large item out in my garage I'm working on uh, so it's nice to have some smaller items here and there as well. And all I did was just put that right on the clip and that was all there was to it. I could have added a little twine, maybe I will, um, but I thought it was cute with those bottles that I had made, the little honey bottles that I made a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I just thought that that was very cute with that little arrangement as well as the bee plate that I had done um, probably two months ago now. And it goes well with the little moth pocket. So that was it. Just a simple little quick and easy shelf sitter. Number five, I had a couple of these little cutouts that came from the dump. This one's a little bunny. So I took two Jenga blocks and I wanted to just glue them on the back of the bunny to make sure that it would sit properly. It wasn't thick enough to sit on its own. 
And then once that dried, I went ahead and took out some tissue paper that I had in my stash and uh, this is just musical notes and I didn't uh, paint this piece first generally I would have but I thought I wanted the just um, natural colored wood to show through and especially to be on the outside edges that was my first thought um, and so I went ahead and just used Mod Podge to decoupage the tissue paper on it was a little bit too thin you could see a lot of the wood through and so I decided to actually just put a second piece of the same tissue paper right on top just two layers um, which I have never tried before, but I didn't think that it would harm anything given that um, this was a pretty basic tissue paper. And so uh, that was a little bit better for the look that I was going for. And I just put some Mod Podge on top and then kind of glued that whole thing down and went around just the top of the outside edge. And then when it was still somewhat wet, peeled away the tissue that I didn't need and then let while, while that was drying I took out some little yarn my husband had gotten at the dump at Christmas time a whole bag of nice new yarn and using a stick I just laid down one piece of yarn going the lengthwise and then wrapped about 30 35 times the um the yarn to make a pom-pom and then once I got that around, I used the two long pieces that I put on first and I tied those to keep that all in a little bundle and to be able to cut the other side of that off of the stick and then to shape it into a little pom-pom. making that a little bit smaller and then just fluffed that and then lift, left that until the bunny was completely dried. And then once I had that done, I took some dark wax, waxed the whole thing so the edges in the back were dark and then just glued the little cotton tail on. And then number six were two little cats that were also on the good table at the dump and I took out some scrap not scrap but you know what do you call it paper that you can get at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or you know any place if you probably have some in your stash and I found two that were kind of coordinating and cut out the large cat out of one and the small cat out of another and once that was cut out I just took a school glue stick. I find with paper on wood that that works really well. Decoupage kind of wrinkles a little bit. And I think the school glue is very good with paper, it tends not to wrinkle. And so I just stuck it right on and it held really well. And then on the second one, I actually put the glue on the wood as well as on the paper and just gave myself that second um, hold just to make sure that that wouldn't, uh, that wouldn't lift off. And then I waited a little while for that to be completely dry. And because there's so many curves on this, uh, on I didn't mention that on the bunny, I had taken a wood, I'm uh, not wood, a uh, that sponge, that purple uh, sanding sponge, and I went all around the bunny and sanded it off. But here I used more of a uh, an emery board so that I could get in all of the creases. So if you just kind of push down on the edge until that. Uh, excess lifts off um, that works out really well and then once that was done I just took my hot glue um, gun and I just put these two together because I thought that would be really cute as a little shelf sitter and very very simple 
And here it is on my blue hutch in my kitchen. I thought that looked really sweet with the blue in the flowers. So you'll have to let me know what you think, which one was your favorite. And take a minute to look at my Nashville vacation video if you haven't already. And I thank you for stopping by. I will see you in the next one.